Hi, in this extremely competitive world of web design, you probably want to get ahead as fast as possible. You want results yesterday. Without a question, your speed is the foundation that can help you achieve those goals. That's the key to outshining other designers. Here's how it works. You'll participate in design contests on various sites and you'll lose. You'll lose a lot. To put it differently, you'll win about 10% of the time. 12 to 15% if you're great. That's one in 10 contests, even lower initially. I arrived at those numbers after I did the maths on 100 plus designers on 99designs.com back in the day when profiles had more stats. So it's inevitable you'll lose lots of projects, but it doesn't mean you'll fail. Your goal is to learn as much as possible, get into various situations and discover something new from those mistakes. You'll misinterpret a brief, you'll trust a contest holder when he says he'll pick you as a winner and then you'll get emotionally destroyed when he doesn't. Someone will steal your idea and win the contest because the client shared your design on his Facebook page. You'll be the only one with five stars and still lose to someone else. You'll create the best design hands down no discussion, but the client will select an entry so poor you'll think it's a setup. You'll work through the night to meet a deadline, but the client will extend the contest without notice. On and on I can tell you stories. Through this course, you'll learn a lot about how to put yourself in the best possible situations and avoid nasty ones, but it's inevitable you'll face some. My take is to speed up the process as much as possible. If you go through all these motions and emotions in, say, a hundred contests, why not get it over with? Instead of participating in three contests a week, ramp the number up to seven, so one contest per day. But a homepage design shouldn't take you over three to four hours so you can definitely do two contests per day. Take some free time, but that still means at least 50 contests per month. In my months when I needed money, I worked on three to four contests per day. I created a good design in under two and a half hours. I had a strict regimen where I'd do one project from 9 to 11.30 and then another one after I came back from the gym. That meant by 3 or 4 p.m. I had the chance of winning two contests. By 6 or 7 p.m. I sometimes did another one, and most days I worked from 9 p.m. to 12 with my favourite talk show in the background. Whenever I received feedback, I'd go back to that project and improve it, so it wasn't three to four new projects every day, but they were new entries. That's discipline, but it's also speed. If you spend eight hours on a design because you don't use your hotkeys or you're hunched over with only one hand on your mouse, then this is not for you. You might succeed, but for me, everything was framed as a time challenge. If I couldn't get results fast, then why bother? I need to succeed now, not when I'm in my mid-30s or 40s, not after years of struggling. And though this is not the point of the lecture, I got great results. In my early 20s, I was earning more than my dad, mum, brother and sister combined, and it was all based on my drive to get faster and better. Going back to specific tips I can give you to improve your speed, I can tell you the following. 1. You must mentally set a goal to be faster. It starts with your desire to improve as fast as possible. If that's not in your heart, all these other tips won't do you any good. That's the best thing I can tell you, and I advise you to think about it. 2. To this day, I still use a gaming mouse with an adjustable speed. My favourite for many years was the A4 Tech X7 that went up to 3200 dpi. That's super fast, but also affordable. Initially, you'll be all over the place with sloppy precision, but you'll slowly get used to it. 3. Keep your desktop clean. Set your browser to download all files to it. When you're done with a project, move everything inside a folder and label it properly. This way, you'll never lose an important file and you won't get caught up in tedious tasks. 4. Program your mouse to show your desktop quickly. If you're buried in lots of folders and files, you'll need an option to get to your resources quickly and that should be placed on your desktop. In Windows 10, you can do that by clicking next to the clock, but I still strongly suggest you use this feature on your mouse. 5. Use your hotkeys and your keyboard like you're a mad piano player. Remember the steps from all techniques and anticipate the next move. If you've done it 10 times, you'll probably do it 10,000 times in Photoshop. Our work is repetitive, so learning the next hotkey or action should be fairly straightforward. 6. Experiment with different workflows and see which ones give you the best results. I take great pride in my techniques, but some may not work for you. Try different things if you feel my advice isn't a great fit for you. 
7. Watch any learning materials at two times the speed. I started with various online tutorials and they were awfully slow. I needed information fast and I resorted to increasing the viewing speed with BS Player. The hotkey is Shift F5 and I suggest you start with 130%. You'll see there's a little difference. Listen for about an hour, then go back to 100%. You'll be stupefied by how slow everything seems. Then move up to 160%. The voice will be higher pitched, but you're looking for certain techniques you can assimilate into your workflow. Watch the mouse, see the outcome. The details can be revisited if the result really impresses you. I'm sitting comfortably at 180% and I can understand everything, even though English isn't my first language. 8. Use a plugin to sort your tabs and bookmarks. I use one tab for Firefox and it's amazing. This allows you to load a lot of inspiration sites and galleries for a particular project and not lose them when you move on to the next. If you receive feedback and you want to refocus on it, simply use the Restore All feature. Number 9. Cut down on all distractions. From what I've read and experienced, no YouTube, no Spotify, no Pandora, just you, alone, in a cool and quiet room, is best for your concentration and productivity. I started working while I was in my parents' apartment with four noisy people and two cats, so I can appreciate if you don't have the most zen working conditions. Do your best to block out everything. Your success depends on it. Finally, advice number 10 is something I can't overstate. Learn from your mistakes. It breaks my heart when I see fellow designers who still struggle after months and years working. When I talk to them, it's usually about the same few mistakes over and over. Why didn't you do it the way I suggested? Well, I thought it was better this way. Why didn't you listen to my advice? I got bored and this seemed faster. I can't help you if you don't listen to my advice. And if you're not getting results after a few months, something is wrong. You should win at least a few contests in the first three to six months. If you're stuck at zero wins, ask the community. We're over 50,000 people. Ask me, I'm here to help, but don't create the same old designs with the same old mistakes for months and months on end and expect a different result. Don't panic if clients aren't awarding contests to you after a handful of contests. It's unlikely you'll win in the first few weeks. I'm not saying it's impossible. I've had students messaging me their success stories after only 20 contests. But set reasonable expectations. Learn from your mistakes and don't repeat them. To sum up this lecture, I'd like you to think about swimming, dancing or learning how to ride a bike. Initially, it's hard. You don't know what to do. You feel overwhelmed. You might panic and you might want to give up. But if you push through those first hours, tens of hours, days or weeks, you'll soon enter a comfortable flow where you can do all those complicated things with ease. That's what we're trying to achieve through our speed. Accelerate our journey through those bad times and get into the good ones. We're trying to shorten the learning curve. OK, with that, let's continue.